This is the Weierstrass function. It's continuous, but isn't differentiable anywhere on the real line. That means it's an infinitely jagged but unbroken line, no matter how much you zoom in. And this self-similarity at multiple scales makes this possibly the first published fractal, 100 years before Mandelbrot coined the term. So, just to recap for some context. In the 1820s, Dirichlet was thinking about what happens to Fourier series at discontinuities. Fourier series, this idea that an infinite sum of trigonometric functions converges to a function was only about 15 years old at the time, and what happened at points where functions jumped up and down wasn't clear. Then in 1829, he found the answer. If some piecewise continuous function, f of x, has a discontinuity at the point x0, then its Fourier series converges to the average of the limit as f of x approaches x0 from the left and from the right. Dirichlet then went on to question what kind of function doesn't fit the criteria of piecewise continuous, one not continuous on any interval, and one that Fourier series wouldn't work for. He found that you can construct such a function phi of x that's equal to a constant c when x is rational and a different constant d when x is irrational. This way phi flips between c and d infinitely often and is never continuous. But many prominent mathematicians thought that a continuous function must be differentiable at at least some points. In fact Ampere wrote a paper in 1806 arguing that a continuous function must be differentiable everywhere except at certain isolated points. And I suppose the reason people thought this is because however many non-differentiable points you introduce into a function, you would always imagine a differentiable part connecting them. And it's difficult to imagine that if every point was non-differentiable, how the function could still be continuous. For a few decades following Dirichlet's discovery of a nowhere continuous function, no one had found a nowhere differentiable function. In 1861, Karl Weierstrass was working as a professor in Berlin, teaching Fourier series and analysis, when he got the news that someone had found the answer. Riemann had announced that the function, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, of the sine of n squared pi x over n squared is continuous but not differentiable for any x. The problem was, he hadn't produced a proof. This clearly inspired Weierstrass. In a public lecture 10 years later, he'd said that he'd tried himself to find a proof but had failed. In fact, we now know that this is an almost nowhere differentiable function, and actually has points that are differentiable, just like Ampere had said. What Weierstrass had found in the process, however, was an actual nowhere differentiable function of his own. Weierstrass's version replaced the 1 over n squared term with a constant a to the power n, the sine with a cosine, and the n squared term with a constant b to the power n. Although I should say that in Weierstrass's original publication, he had the a and b the other way round. I'm just sticking with the more modern convention. You might have noticed that what Weierstrass did was write down the Fourier series of some unknown function and then ask, how can I make this continuous but nowhere differentiable? And I think this is all the more impressive that this was before we had good ways to visualize what this function might look like. So the first thing to do is to show that this is a continuous function. Because this is the sum of continuous functions, all we have to do is show that this series converges, and we'll do that using the Weierstrass M test. This test says that if we have a sequence of functions, absolute value of f sub n, that is bounded above by some sequence of constants m sub n for all n in the natural numbers on some domain, if the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of m sub n converges, then the sum to infinity of f sub n converges uniformly, and is therefore continuous. For the Weierstrass function, we have f sub n is a to the power n cosine of b to the power n pi x. Since the cosine part is less than or equal to 1, we can say that this is bounded above by a to the power n which can be our m sub n for the Weierstrass m test. 
What we require is that the sum of a to the power n for n equals 1 to infinity converges. This means that a must be a real number greater than 0 but less than 1. So we've shown the function is continuous, but what about differentiability? Well, to get some intuition, nothing is stopping us from just taking the derivative. What we can see is by using the m test again, the derivative only converges if a times b to the power n is less than 1, which means a times b is less than 1. This isn't proof that the Weierstrass function is nowhere differentiable if a times b is greater than 1, but it does happen to be true. For example, choosing a equals 0.6 and b equals 1.2, we get a smooth function. But increasing a to 0.9 takes us back to something non-differentiable as a times b becomes greater than 1. G. H. Hardy pointed out this requirement of a times b greater than 1, with a strictly less than 1, as being the natural conditions in his work on the Weierstrass function in 1916. The full proof that the Weierstrass function is nowhere differentiable is much more involved, and others have already done really good explainers. I'll leave links to videos that go through it in the video description. Weierstrass himself had slightly different conditions on A and B in his original paper. This was because, for one thing, the fact that Weierstrass considered his function to be a Fourier series meant that B must be an integer. He also restricted B to the odd integers, and as far as I can tell, it's because it's useful in the proof. What Hardy did was refine these criteria, as well as come up with a more generalized Weierstrass function. And so there we have it, a function made out of the sum of continuous, differentiable functions that is itself continuous, but not differentiable anywhere on the real line.